Welcome to day three of our Fall Fiesta event. For today's grouping of demonstrations, we've put together the tools that deal with those specialty units that add sparkle to your quilting projects. You're gonna see how quickly and how easily you can create these units and keep all the points. And don't forget, today's the day of our live Facebook chat, and that's from 12.30 to 1.30 Eastern Time. If you have any questions, that's where we can address them face to face. And um, hopefully you're gonna learn something new today and have a great time doing it. So at this time, I'd like to introduce you to our series of Corner Pop tools, the original Corner Pop and the Corner Pop 2 and the Corner Pop 3. And if you're not familiar with them, I'm going to start with the Corner Pop 1 and explain what this tool is all about. Uh, there's a method out there that most of you have probably tried in your quilting process that uh, I call folded corners. You might know it as snowball corners. And it's where you take and you place a small square in the corner of a large square. You mark on the diagonal, you stitch on the diagonal, and fold a square back into place. And I don't know whether you're better at that than I am, but I know if I were putting on four corners to make a snowball block, one would be too short, one would be too long, one would be wonky, and one would be right. Oh, my success rate was just horrible with that. So I created the corner pop tool to give me a better chance of getting pieces that are the right size, in the right place, and getting a better success rate. So the Corner Pop 1 tool has patented guidelines on it that you will use when you place over the corner of the base shape. And the patented guidelines are designed to trim away a corner that you don't need, but they're designed to leave the quarter of an inch seam that you do need on the base shape. So then I can do what I like to do, which is place an oversized triangle in there, completely overfill the corner, and then come back with the trim down lines that are on the tool and clean up the edges so that I have a better chance of having things the way they need to be, to be able to meet and match other pieces and other units. And we introduced that tool uh, several years ago, and we've recently released what we call the Corner Pop 2 and Corner Pop 3 that have that same philosophy of trimming away a corner, leaving the quarter of an inch seam, allowing me to add an oversized triangle, and then trim it down. But the replacement triangles have a different angle. If you're working with the Corner Pop 1, realize that your replacement triangles will be in a, what we call a one-to-one -one ratio. They're going to be equal. If this is two inches, then this is two inches. If you work with the Corner Pop 2 tool, what will happen is you'll put on a triangle that's twice as tall as it is wide at the base. So if this is two inches, this will be four inches. And if you work with the Corner Pop 3, that will give you a much taller, thinner triangle. If this is two, this is gonna be six inches. And this is the tip of the iceberg. You can add replacement triangles, not just to simple squares, but you can add them to other shapes and other pieces that have 90 degree angles. And then you can start to multiply and add, do a corner pop three and then add a corner pop two and add a corner pop one. As designers, we really enjoy having the opportunity to create very unique, very different type projects very quickly and very easily. The project that you, have, that you see behind me is just one of the patterns and one of the projects that we've got with these tools. Take a few minutes and see some of the other patterns that we've created for the Corner Pop 2 and the Corner Pop 3.
Now here at Studio 180 Design, we're all about the tools because I know you've heard this before, the right tool for the job makes your job easier. And I can guarantee you that these are the tools that are gonna help you build your quilts with a much easier construction process. But realize also that these tools are not just for Studio 180 Design quilts and patterns. These are tools that you can adapt to all the different patterns and projects that are on your bucket list and we call that tuckerizing. Using a pattern, using our tools and creating quilts that are better constructed and easier to produce and ending up with quilts that you can be entirely proud to give, to share, to hang and put on display. So don't hesitate, put these tools in your toolbox, you'll be glad that you did. Now the next two tools I'm going to introduce you to are my V-block and corner beam. And these two tools create shapes that add real sparkle and pizzazz to your quilting projects. And let me outline what they do. The V-block creates squares that have two seams from the corner to the center and the corner to the center. The corner beam creates squares that have two seams from the corner to the center and the corner to the center. And they are indeed totally different blocks, which is why I have two different tools, but the tools look the same because the side triangle that's on this shape and the side triangle that's on this shape, they have the same angle, which is what I'm cutting from that edge of the tool. So these are self-contained tools. They have all the um, guidelines that you need to be able to cut all the parts of the, the different blocks. The V block does 11 sizes from one inch finished units up to and including six inch finished units. And the corner beam also has 11 sizes from one inch all the way up to the six inch finished sizes. And let me talk about these one at a time. The V block has guidelines and angled edge that you use to cut that center triangle out of strips a little bigger than it needs to be. It has a different set of guidelines here and guidelines here along with the angled edge that you use to cut the side triangles. And what happens is you'll create that unit slightly oversized and then the magic happens. You get to trim it down and clean it up. And when I set that up with the guidelines for the three inch finished unit that I'm creating, I line up the three at the base of the unit and clean it up. And what happens, I don't know if you can quite see this, but the tool places it so that the future quarter of an inch seams meet right there. That's what gives you points on those units when they're put into a project. And after I make the first trim, lift the tool, rotate this around, and put my cleanup lines there with an X up at the top, and trim this to a high precision unit with all the seams being properly placed. And never forget, all of my tools have those instructions for cutting right-handed as well as left-handed on the process. Now the, v, the corner beam does pretty much the same thing. Once I've created the shape, I'm gonna have it oversized. When I go to trim it down, I'm trimming the pointy end first. If I'm right-handed, I happen to put the pointy end in the upper right-hand corner. If I were left-handed, I'd put it in the upper left-hand corner. But when I position this for trimming and position the guidelines, the patented lines that are on the tool over top and trim that corner, it's going to create a perfect point in my project because I'm trimming it to the exact place that it needs to be. Lift the tool, rotate the unit 180 degrees. When I reposition this, not only do I have the cleanup lines, my three and a half cut size for a three inch finished unit, but I have registration marks here at the three to know that I'm making a three inch finished unit. And I have a couple of registration marks out at the end right here that allow me to fine tune that alignment just a little bit and end up with blocks that are exactly the right size with seams in exactly the right place. And if I happen to be putting the two of those together like this or like this, you know, they're going to meet and they're going to match. So if you notice these units in 
a pattern that you're doing and it may have you building these with um, either templates or with paper foundation piecing, think about picking these tools up. 11 sizes, I've yet to need any sizes more than I have in either the V-block or the corner beam. And please also notice that all of my tools have that little icon on them so that they're easy to figure out which one, this is the tool for the corner beam, this shape, this is the tool for the V-block and that shape. So take a look at some of the projects we've created and think about adding these to your toolbox. You know, quilters, if you ask any craftsman, if you ask any guy about tools, they're all going to say exactly the same thing. The right tool for the job makes your job easier. Well, I believe that's a true statement, and that's why we have created tools for you as quilters. These quilt tools are going to make your quilt construction easier than you ever thought possible. And all of the tools have built-in value not only with the number of sizes that you can create with all the different tools, but with the fine lines that give you high precision, with the illustrated instructions so that you can use the tools right-handed or left-handed, and those free educational videos that you'll have access to 24 hours a day, seven days a week. But, you know, there are also a, a group of very highly qualified individuals that are our certified instructors. We have more than 100 scattered throughout this country and throughout Canada and, and, and around the world. And these are instructors that you can find out about by visiting our website, contacting someone who might be near to you, and invite them to your shop, to your guild, to conduct a workshop or a lecture. Invite them to a retreat and spend a number of days learning how to use all these tools with hands-on instructions. And you know, while you're at our website, why don't you take a minute and subscribe to our newsletter or, and also join our Facebook page so that you're gonna be able to keep up with all the developments that we are creating here at Studio 180 Design. But do not hesitate to add these tools to your toolbox. You know, rookies, this is gonna bring a level of success to your work that you would have had to struggle for years to get to. And those of you who are veteran quilters and have tried making some of these blocks and units with other tools that are out there, you're going to find that they're going to collect dust and these are the only tools you're going to want to pull out in your process. You're going to get a level of success that you never thought possible. You're going to be thrilled with how easy they are to use and the quality of your projects when you're done are going to astound you and all of your friends. So again, don't hesitate, start adding these tools to your toolbox and you'll be glad that you did. Now, have you ever wanted to make a storm at sea quilt? You know, it's a quilt that's on a lot of people's bucket list and every storm at sea quilt requires two basic shapes to be able to build them. It requires squares, that have a square set on point in the middle and it requires rectangles that have a diamond in the middle. The square squared is the tool that I created to deal with this shape. Again, if you recall, it has uh, window templates to precision cut the center. It has a chart for cutting the triangles 
around it that are going to be oversized and then it has a trim down section that allow me to trim that up and clean it to exactly the right size and shape. Well the Diamond Rex has that same type of building philosophy but it's got a few more steps to it. It has a window template section that allows me to precision cut the diamond shape and I precision cut that out of fabric strips. And then it also has window templates on the tool to cut those elongated triangles and you cut those out of pairs of rectangles so that when you build the unit it's purposely oversized allowing me to come back and trim it down and clean it up. And the trim down section has X's on it just like on the square squared that when I position the proper X's over top of the sewn seams centers the tool over the shape. Two by four is what I'm doing, so I'm putting those X's right over top of the seams that are already sewn and already pressed. Trim the unit so it's square and clean. I think I may have rolled that a little bit. And the seams are properly placed. Lift the tool, rotate the unit. And for me, as a right-hander, I'm going to place those same X's on there, but I'm orienting this vertically for me. The same X's and the cleanup lines giving me a perfectly sized unit, but remember, these tools are just as easy to use if you're left-handed. A left-hander, instead of a vertical arrangement, you would simply place that unit horizontally, place the same guidelines on there so that you can easily trim up the left and across the top. So if Storm at Sea is something that you want to do, you're going to want to add the Square Squared tool and the Diamond Rex tool to your lineup to give you building blocks that are the right size so that, that those quilts are going to end up being better constructed in the end. Enjoy the quilt show that we have that feature the Diamond Rex tool. Now, if you haven't guessed already, this whole philosophy of making your pieces oversized and trimming them down to create better building blocks is going to build success in your machine piecing endeavors. These are some of the units that we've been talking about making, and you can see when I start to put them together, they're going to line up and be even on the edges. But you might also notice that when I have this scenario, they meet and match in the middle. For those of you who are rookies, you are not going to have to be sewing for 20 years to get successful units that add that sparkle that you want to your quilts. And for you that are veterans, you're going to realize that the Studio 180 design line of tools for the value and all the sizes that you create and the precision of the building blocks are so much better than anything else that's on the market, including templates or dies or tools that tell you if you cut the pieces perfectly, they're going to be perfect at the end. So get them in your hand, get them in your toolbox, learn how to use the Studio 180 design tools, and you're going to be creating the very best quilts that you have ever created. And you'll be increasing your success and decreasing your stress because none of us got into quilting to add stress to our lives. So lots of you have heard me speak about technique sheets. If you're not familiar with what they are, our technique sheets are process oriented cards that are associated with the Studio 180 lineup of tools and they're going to allow you or teach you how to do other things with your tools that isn't necessarily covered in the basic set of instructions. All of the technique sheets have some similar features. They're all heavily laminated, they have holes punched in them so that you can easily access them and store them. They have a little identification flag up here that tells you this is a technique associated with this specific tool. There's a difficulty rating listed there, one being the easiest, five being the most difficult. All of them have step-by-step -step instructions. Most of them have charts for you to be able to do a technique 
in lots of different sizes. And all of the technique sheets also have free online educational videos. And you know, adding these technique sheets to your library are going to, he to help you expand and broaden the use of your tools to create additional units that you can easily team up with some familiar units. In this quilt behind me, we have a number of our technique sheets represented. We have a sidekick unit here. We have a high-low unit represented here. This is what we call a shaded four patch, and that shaded four patch is inside of a bird of paradise unit. And in the middle here, we have our economy block from our stock stack square technique sheet. So don't hesitate to put these guys into your lineup as well as the Studio 180 design grouping of tools because these are going to make those tools that much valuable, more valuable than they are right out of the right, right out of the case. So add them to your library, you'll be glad you did. I'd like to take a few minutes to introduce to you a dear friend of mine, Marie Boswick, and let you know about a quilting collaboration that we've been involved with for most of the last 15 years. Now, Marie is indeed a very fine quilter, but that's probably not how you know her. Marie is actually a New York Times best-selling author, and she's the originator of the Cobbled Court series of quilting novels. And we actually met at a quilting retreat about 15 years ago became instant friends, and soon after started discussing how we could work together to create quilts that went along with her novels. And so for most of the last 15 years, we've done just that. Every spring when Marie releases a book, um, I create two projects that are closely connected to the theme or one of the characters in the book. One of the projects is a simple project that I give to Marie for her to post on her website, and we also post on our website that's free to any of you who may be interested. And I also create patterns for larger projects, for full-size quilts, that you're going to be able to create and remind you of how wonderful the story was that you were reading. And you know, there's, the collaboration continues. Next spring, be on the lookout for not just another great novel, from Marie, but also for quilting designs and projects from Studio 180 Design. So here we are at the end of our fall fiesta. I've had a great time. I hope you have too. I also hope that you've learned a thing or two and that you've discovered a solution to a piecing dilemma that you may have had in the past. And if that haven't want it list is full of items that you want to add to your toolbox, why not consider taking advantage of our show special? And to see all the details on that, visit our website. And once you get those in your toolbox, start creating the amazing quilts that you've always wanted to produce. Good luck with everything, and I'll see you next time. <music>